Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at SIG in Neuhausen, Switzerland, and have a chance to shoot one of their MP48 submachine guns. This is the, the final iteration of what started off as the MK, P O P S M O M S series. So these guns started off in the 20s as these incredibly elegant, refined, very Swiss uh, submachine guns, and by the late 40s, after World War II, they'd really cut most of the bells and whistles off, and they were left with this, which uh, our Swiss armorer elegantly referred to as a ghetto blaster. So the rate of fire is apparently going to be very high on this. Uh, we have 9mm Parabellum, of course, and this is the same magazine that was used all the way back to the MK, P, O, P, S, etc. Uh, series of guns, 40 rounds. I'm going to start with a couple rounds in semi. The bolt throw on this is very, very short. So it will be interesting to see how the recoil handles on it. Open it. Then put the magazine in. Yeah, all right, semi-auto. Okay, the weirdest thing about that is there's a harmonic going on in the stock, and you get this really loud ringing noise every time you fire, which is... I think it's coming in through my ear protection, but that's that's different. Other than that, recoil is pretty easy to work with. Not a big deal. Let's see what it's like in full auto. Ooh, that's actually really nice. I was expecting it to be harsher and a lot worse than that. Magazine release is here on the front, and the reason for that is the lever on the side allows you to fold the magazine up for transport. I have one more mag, and I'm going to save a few rounds in this because we actually have a round counter over here. I'm going to take it over there and uh, actually see what the rate of fire is exactly. All right, let's see what that came out at. No less than 1,026 rounds per minute on an 18 round burst. That's pretty darn fast. All right, 1,000 rounds a minute. Damn. Until you get a malfunction. It really is kind of remarkable just how nice this gun remains as a shooter, even with all of the fancy elements taken away from it uh, for more efficient production. So, pretty cool. Really, exactly what you'd expect from the Swiss. Really nice guns. All right, I apologize. The sound out here is not so great, but uh, we're going to take a quick look at the mechanics here. We have, of course, this 40-round magazine. As I said, same as in previous Swiss submachine guns. It's interesting. It's a double stack. A double feed magazine, but it does have a couple of little ribs up here that taper uh, the cartridges in. And it's actually kind of remarkably difficult to load, especially given that it's a double feed magazine. But uh, aside from that, a nice reliable mag. This button here allows me to pull the magazine up for transportation, carry, storage, whatever, and then Push it again, you can fold it down. The magazine release is there on the front. We have a safety selector lever on the side. When you can see 40, that's full auto. When you can see one, that's semi-auto. And there is no manual safety. Uh, I believe the doctrine on this was that the manual safety was to have the magazine well folded forward. Because as long as that's the case, obviously, you're not going to fire the gun. It has an open notch rear sight back here. And then you can see that the front sight is very reminiscent of Swiss rifles, uh, the, the K31 series, with that uh, nice square post in the front, and then the, uh, the sight guards that kind of curve back in towards the front sight. The rear sight has four different positions. You can see 300, 200, 100, 
and 50 meters. It's interesting to note that this front forging for the, the front trunnion um, was kind of left in its uh, raw forged uh, condition. I've seen a couple of these here, and they're all like that. So this was, as I said, really the last development of this gun. And they were letting a lot of the aesthetic uh, considerations kind of go uh, in favor of presumably reduced cost. Not a very Swiss thing to do, but that's what they did. The buttstock collapses. This is the extended position where it locks against these two little tabs. To close it, you push those in, and then the stock collapses down to that long. Here we have the most compact, you know, carry version setup of the gun. So stock's folded up, magazine's folded up, that's as small as it gets. In order to extend the stock, you just grab it and pull out. There's nothing that locks it in a closed position. All right, then for disassembly, we have a button back here on the rear end cap. However, you always want to have the bolt closed when disassembling, uh, lest the spring go flying out the back. So push that button in, rotate it slightly, and then the recoil spring comes out the back. Then we can pull the bolt back to here. At this point, the charging handle comes out, and then the bolt comes out. Mechanically, this is a very simple system. It's just a straight blowback submachine gun. So the bolt mass uh, and the spring pressure is what keeps it closed long enough for pressure to drop to a safe level. We have a fixed firing pin in the front, extractor right there. This one's pretty gunky from being fired a bunch. Uh, there's the spring that puts tension on the extractor. And then the back of the bolt is hollow because we have our captive recoil spring here. So that compresses into the tube, and the tube just sits nicely in the bolt, like that. Keeps everything nice in line. There's an inner guide here on the spring, so the spring can't kink. Um, it's a simple design, but it's a very effective design. This is really all you need for a modern submachine gun. One other quick clever note, uh, the carry handle of course sits in here, and it is keyed. There's a little detent right there, so it's going to sit like that. However, also held in place by this recoil spring tube. If I push that all the way to the front, you'll see that it actually protrudes into the charging handle hole. And the charging handle has this cutout section to accommodate it. So if I put the charging handle in, and as long as the recoil spring is also in, the charging handle can't come out. Now, the only place the charging handle could come out is right here at the back, because that's the only place where it's big enough. But uh, I guess this is just an extra bit of security to make sure it doesn't come loose, I guess, during firing, something like that. Anyway, uh, a big thank you to folks uh, who support me on Patreon for making it possible for me to travel like this. And also a big thank you to Vickers Guide. This is, we are here doing photography for their upcoming books, and you will be seeing guns like this MP48 in some upcoming Vickers Guide books. So definitely stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching.